Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a special Saturday show. I don't often do shows on Saturday, but uh, we are in this case. Sometimes I don't want to get behind. There's so much information that's coming out, and I want to stay caught up on everything. So today we're doing a show on Saturday. Thanks to all of those of you that showed up to the re-upload from yesterday about God's temple representing the journey from birth to death and towards rebirth. That was a really cool re-upload show. Thanks to you that showed up for that. I want to start off today's show with some alarming news that I got from a neighbor that I don't believe even follows our channel. And for the sake of her privacy, I will call her Cindy. Cindy, if you do follow this channel and you're listening, then you know that we've been covering rabid raccoons all throughout the pandemic and beyond. But if you're not watching and you don't watch this channel, then that makes this testimony all the more creepy. And pretty much I'm just going to pull up her texts here and read them. Okay, so Cindy says, you see any animal falling down or going in circles you know that there is something wrong with it. I might add, we've lived here for 28 years and haven't had any sick animals around us. Wow. So, the conversation started because I had noticed that there were some wildlife, fish, and game people driving up our county road, which is a small county road. It's kind of remote. It's on a peninsula of the lake. And I was asking her about it, like, what's up? Why are they driving down a road? And it is turkey season. But she said that the, there, there is some public land on the edge of the lake further down the road. And hunters come out here and they mark the land with white crosses so that, they, so that people can be aware that that uh, these are hunting lands or whatever. And it's not a lot of land. It's about the first couple, two, three hundred yards of the lakefront on public properties. And so I guess Fish and Game was out there ensuring that they were putting these white crosses on the on the correct land out here. So that's what that was all about. But I was I got chills when when I got this text message from her yesterday because essentially they had never seen a rabid animal in almost 30 years. And so they put down the raccoon, of course, and all is back to normal. But it is definitely a sign of the shape of things to come based on everything we've been talking about. About rabies and raccoons and all this and the, them dropping these rabies pellets across 13 states. I don't know what it's up to now, but... 13 states they were dropping these rabies pellets over the last couple of years and during the pandemic and no one had ever heard of that before i mean it was very rare that anyone that i knew before that talked about rabies because it would have come up on our radar wouldn't it have so anyway that's a little update on what's going on in my neck of the woods today we're going to go all the way back to the beginnings of this channel 2013 and the lines of death, we called them. Now, a few of you, and you can go ahead and speak up now. If you've been on this channel since 2013, we'd like to see you in the chat here. Just to give yourself some recognition for sticking with it for all these years. And I think that you guys probably have stuck with it because you keep seeing the information manifesting in our reality. And you know that all this isn't just in our heads, that this stuff is actually coming to fruition, some of the things that we've talked about in the past. And today will be one such show, because we're going to show you how these lines of death, these ley lines that we'd identified almost 10 years ago, are actually going to coincide with the coming eclipses actually the second eclipse in a series of two eclipses that cross 
in Macanda, Illinois. So that's going to be the subject of today's show. Wow, there's a few of you out there. There's Linda. I saw someone else. I'm sorry, but wow, a lot of you have been around since 2013. Now, we first began looking at eclipses right around this time on the channel, about 2013. And then we got into the Lines of Death series. And I think there were probably 10 or 12 videos in total that we did. And what we found was this. Let's skip over to here. This is one of those videos from 10 years ago. And basically what we found was we first started looking at eclipses and then into these lines of death. Ley lines that seemed to cover America in the shape of a giant pentagram. One of the first ley lines that we investigated was the 188th ley line. And that's this line right here. And I'm going to go kind of slow today because I want to make sure some of you are new to ley lines. And I want to make sure that you understand fully that these aren't just random lines across the planet. These are established ley lines. So we're going to take our time today. This is the 188th ley line. This diagonal line going across the screen here. And it runs from the northeast down the eastern seaboard and through Mexico. What makes this line bizarre is that it passes through the Temple of the Feathered Serpent at Mexico, Teotihuacan, Mexico. Then it goes through Handy Suk, literally right through the former site of the elementary school, Handy Suk. And then it goes all the way across the Atlantic Ocean and goes right through Stonehenge. Now, this first ley line was discovered not by us, but by a channel called, I believe the name was God Code Matrix of the 188th ley line. I think that was the name of the, that channel. I don't know if the channel's still around, but that was the name of the channel. This is what started our journey to find this giant pentagram across America because we knew that there had to be more of these lines. So we began searching. And it was all and it was all and when it was all said and done, a giant pentagram appeared, the one you see on your screen here. And very close to the center of the pentagram, something happened years after we discovered it. The pair of eclipses crossing here in the heart position of the pentagram, which would be this area where your heart would be in your chest on the left side. Now, one of these eclipses already happened in 2017 in Macanda, Illinois. The other one will happen in 2024 on April 8th in the exact same spot where the X's cross. Falling within the bounds of the inverted Georgia guides pentagram. Sorry, I accidentally hit the play button there. Falling in the exact position inside the pentagram the inverted pent pentagon inside the pentagram, right? Now, there's another line that we'll fill in here as the show goes on here to complete the pentagram. So, that's what we're going to get into today. The research journey spanning an entire decade that seems to have supernatural continuity throughout the decade. Unlocking other keys to other things. And of course, this could only have been inspired by the Most High. Now, let's get started on this. Now, several of the first Lines of Death videos that we had on the channel were either deleted by YouTube or I took them down 
to protect the channel, especially the handy sook ones, because back then we had to say handy sook. I mean, we said the actual name of the elementary school, We could, and that word alone would trigger the algorithms to delete channels. A lot of channels got taken down. And all of that was, of course, the fault of the controlled opposition, okay? The loudmouths that were on YouTube harassing families and stuff, they were the cause of the censorship. I believe that they were operatives to do just that, okay? They weren't careful about how they approached the subject. And so therefore... Uh, it ruined it for the rest of us so that we could never speak again on some of these topics. But what you're going to see is you're going to see the lines on this video, and they're all drawn out here, but just understand there were many other videos before this. This was actually a part eight that we did. But again, those are gone now. So, but in this video, I actually pick up and actually go through one by one and share the discoveries with you of each of the lines in this part eight. And here you see the pentagram and pentagon beginning to form the 180th ley line that we just discussed. And let's get started. First time in history that the Georgia Guidestones line up at exactly 322 degrees on the compass. Now, I promised a follow-up video, and this is it. These lines of death that I have lined up based on all the information to this point are forming a giant pentagram across the United States. These here are the Georgia Guidestones, and this is the 322 degree line. Now the opposite of 322 on the compass is 142. So you can also extrapolate the line back around the other side of the planet. And what I found was simply shocking. I went to Wikipedia and I searched the most destructive and forceful earthquakes of all time. And I mapped them out. Now there are some in South America that did not fit on this line, but three quarters of these points fit on the 322 line. Now I'm gonna interrupt myself here because the line I'm speaking about right now is this line right here, going diagonally from the Georgia Guidestones. Now why did I put that line there? Well, the former Georgia Guidestones, of course they've been destroyed now, actually aligned, the stones actually formed this ley line. So when I went into Google Earth and drew a line where the, where the cross members were on the stones, and that's what formed one of these lines of the pentagram. Let's keep going. Now, before we get into that, for clarification's sake, I'm going to identify all these lines. This line here is the line that's formed when you run a straight line through Washington, D.C., the Capitol, and the, the Washington National Monument. It forms a line. This is that line. So that first line is this cross member here. And this is the 88 degree line that runs through DC. That's what the cross member is on this pentagram. Unbelievable. This line here is formed from Kazakhstan. And there is a line in the capital of Astana. It's extrapolated down and connects with Teotihuacan, the temple, or the pyramid. So, this line here, this vertical-ish line, is all the way from across the world in Kazakhstan, where there is a feathered serpent, literally, from the aerial view in the gardens of Astana, Kazakhstan. And we drew a line from that feathered serpent and it was literally a line in the landscape we just extended the line and it pointed to another feathered serpent at Teotihuacan Mexico 
So that's this vertical line here that you're seeing on the screen. Let's keep going. Of the sun. This line is the 188th ley line that goes through the all the major cities of the eastern seaboard. Now all of these yellow pins are disasters of mass death and destruction and terrorism. And we've covered the 188th ley line in in depth. Now the Georgia Guidestones fall on the 188th ley line. These are within a proximity of at least somewhere between 40, 20 to 40 to 60 miles. So these are very close. Now we are missing a line here to, to finish the pentagram and this is my challenge to you. I can't do it all. You guys, I appreciate all of the work that you've done and the suggestions that you send me. But I become overwhelmed and I just don't have the time to put all this together. I need other eyes on this. Opening up Google Map and Google Earth and figuring this out and helping me so that we can get to the bottom of this. Obviously, there is something very sinister and evil going on and we are not privy to it and we are finding it out now but we are missing a line to the pentagram if someone could extrapolate that line out or find some um, monuments um, something that will point us to this where this line falls that will be invaluable that will help us in our search so obviously at this point we had not found the last line but we do find it in a few more videos. But let's focus back on this 188th ley line, the line that started it all. This diagonal line going along the eastern seaboard and down through the Gulf of Mexico and Mexico. That line, as we said, goes through Handy Sook Elementary. This is the feathered crowned serpent. And this image that you're looking at here was also repeated long before in this image of Quetzalcoatl, which was also a feathered crowned serpent. Well, that ley line goes from another crowned serpent. This is the new Handy Sook school redesigned watch this this is crazy you guys remember the ley line falls and it goes right through this school now here is the former school and i want you to look at the similarities between the outline and structure of the school and compare it to the actual temple of the feathered serpent in Mexico. And the similarities are undeniable. Now it was God Code Matrix of the 188th that discovered the similarities. He had side-by-sides of it. Showed all the different elements that look like uh, these look like air conditioners on top of the building. Look, here we go. Back to Handy Sook. And there you see the similarities with the roof structures. In this case, these are, I guess, um, air conditioning units. But very similar with this courtyard enclosed square design. There's also a sun patio in the back. Remember, it's the, it's the crown of the serpent, the corona of the serpent. There's something similar here as well. So what does all this mean? Now, you used to be able to type in the 188th ley line or God code matrix and these images would pop right up, these side-by-sides and the similarities of these things on the ley line. But now they've been scrubbed from the internet. Google search now hides this amazing discovery. But as you just saw, it is true and it is correct. 
and that the school was actually redesigned as the very feathered crown serpent whose ley line that it passed through. Now I'll put a link to this Lines of Death playlist here so you guys can see it. And we're going to get into this last line that is missing so far. Let's keep going here. For the time being though, I... Now, I believe we found the last line in this video. Let's take a look. Hey you guys, it's in the stars. And... I believe that our pentagram is complete. Now, for the majority of these red lines, you need to re, uh, look at my previous video on how we established those lines. The only line in question was this red line here to complete the pentagram. Now, I'm going to show you how I arrived at this line. First, you're going to see other lines in this video and we have some shocking information. We were able to get the 322 degree line by lining up the guide stones at the Georgia guide stones. But what I didn't do is line up the stones going in the other direction. And what I found was simply unbelievable. Let's take a look so you can see for yourself. These are the Georgia Guidestones. And the red line that you see is the line that actually connects the stones going in the 322 degree direction. We covered that on the previous video, so I'm not going to go over it again. But then we had lines or stones going in another direction. And this is so again, all I did was line up these diagonal cross members, and this formed one of the lines of the pentagram. Let me check in with you guys. We'll keep going with this. This was 10 years ago, you guys. 10 years ago. Many of you are realizing something. Wow, Casey, we've seen this before, but on other channels that never mentioned your channel. Well, that's fine. That's fine. But understand that a lot of the discoveries in the truth community originated from this channel but look at the size of our channel still after all these years let's keep going with this this is unbelievable this is what I found these lines line up and exactly 33 degrees. So if anyone had any questions about the authenticity of the information that we're uncovering at this point, this should put all questions to rest. 322 degrees in one direction and 33 degrees in the other direction. Two very important symbol symbolic numbers used by the Illuminati. Now remember, the stones, the guide stones, opened on 322, 1980, I believe. So they already knew what they were doing here, didn't they? Okay, on to the next thing. We're going to zoom out now that you've got your bearings. We're going to take a look at these other lines. So I extended the 33 degree line all the way around the globe. And honestly, I could not find any points of interest other than the fact that they're calling out the 33 degrees. Okay, I ran this all the way around the planet. Now, you're probably wondering what this pink line is. This pink line, I took the apex of the Great Pyramid in Egypt and I ran it at 322 degrees all the way around the planet or halfway around the planet and this is where it pointed to that pin is Roswell New Mexico Now I'm still trying to get the exact coordinates of Roswell and the UFO crash 
and I believe it is a little closer to this line than the pin mark shows. The pin mark is the city of Roswell. So I don't know if the UFO crash happened. Drivers here can help out with that. In this picture, I'm going to tell you how I got the yellow line. This point here is the Denver International Airport. When you draw a line 111 degrees, it intersects the 322 line of the guide stones at this point here. So all I did with this line that's coming out from the bottom is I used this point and this line ended up being exactly 90 degrees on the compass. It goes near Roswell. It actually So the way I got this last line was I drew a line from Denver International Airport. It intersected the pentagram almost exactly. It dissected it almost in half. For those of you that know geometry, you know that that is legal to do or whatever or acceptable. And found out that the line was exactly 111 degrees. Now many of you will notice this falls very close to St. James Island where egg stain is. This bottom corner of the pentagram. So then from there I drew a 90, de 90 degree compass heading. And that line intersected the other point of the pentagram. Now absolutely you could say that this last line was kind of extrapolated. It wasn't as direct as a as a line as the other lines, but I believe it is a ley line. You have several things happening along this line. You have the Hurricane Katrina on this line. You have the BP oil spill happening along this line. Of course, Roswell, New Mexico, very close. And a few other things I think I mentioned here. I don't know what that is there in California, but let's keep watching. Actually also goes near all these points here. Waco, Texas. JFK assassin. Oh, okay, so Waco happened on that line. Fort Hood, Hurricane Katrina. Assassination. Fort Hood. Shooting. We're talking We're talking um you know, within 60 miles, 50 to 60 miles of these points. Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Frederick, 1979, the BP oil spill. Okay. But this is the destination. San Onofre Power Plant. And as you can see, Hoover Dam really doesn't intersect with any of these lines. So I'm having trouble with some of the predictions that have come out to this point about Hoover Dam. But San Onofre we're looking at, let's take a look at the measurement here, about 20 miles, 17 to 20 miles from this line. Now, now we're to the point where we've established the validity of these ley lines. So what I did next was superimpose that image over where the eclipses cross. And this is what I came up with. So we're taking the pentagram ley lines and we're finding out where the eclipses cross. And here it is. There's the crossing eclipses and there's the pentagram. And as you can see, where they cross is right over the heart position of the pentagram. So imagine if this pentagram was like a person, a five-pointed person with their heart in the left side of their chest. This is where the eclipses cross. Macanda, Illinois. And again, eclipse is coming up on April 8th, 2024. And we'll be keeping a watchful eye on that. Obviously, the big elephant in the room is the 2024 election. Presidential election. So, will something happen? I have no idea if something's going to happen. And even if it hasn't, even if nothing happens, it kind of already has happened, hasn't it? The crowned serpent 
has already sunk his two fangs into America, into the heart of America. And people's hearts are failing them out of fear. So what I would things I would look for would be the continued deterioration of people's health due to the fangs of the serpent. Coinciding with this eclipse. And it will maybe be an unexplained illness that they will say it is overtaking everybody. Now, Monday, I will be airing a very important show that we did on prions. And we will see how that fits into everything that's going on right now. And then on Tuesday, one of you found a CERN experiment literally named Gargamel. Now, if you're whoever discovered that and sent me the message on that or in the comment section, please stand up and let us know who you are because that was an amazing discovery. We're going to dig into the roots of the name Gargamel and what CERN actually said it was named after. It was a vintage classical story about a giant. We're also going to see how that ties into the Smurfs and portals. You guys, the Most High has blessed us with eyes to see. All that was hidden is being revealed, isn't it? Now, I know some of you are chomping at the bit. You really, really, really want to see the show on the CERN experiment called Gargamel. Let me give you a little bit of a teaser. We'll go through some of these tabs that I already have pulled up. This is the experiment right there in black and white. You can't make this up. It is a heavy liquid bubble chamber detector using a beam of light, just like the beam coming out of Gargamel's wand. And they send it through this liquid that then they analyze the bubbles. This is the bubble chamber. Gargamel. You can't make this up. The beam of energy sent through the bubble chamber. There's a bubble smurf. We're going to look at that. We're going to look at an episode of the Smurfs called Bubble, Bubble, Smurfs, and Trouble. And the rabbit hole goes pretty deep. And I found and unlocked another discovery about what this actually means. The Smurfs are demonic entities, particles. So, yeah, I certainly got chills as well. God wins. Wow. I mean, God has blessed us with the eyes to see this stuff. We're going to uncover it. Yeah, you can't make it up, Carol. I mean, basically, just to give you a snapshot into what CERN and that whole program is all about. We did many videos on CERN. Talking about how CERN actually names their particle accelerators and programs after these ancient Greek and Roman entities and gods. Many of the world's particle accelerators are named after these gods. Hera, Petra, Caesar, Minerva. We've covered all of them over the years. So, now we have Gargamel. Gargamel was actually the, the wife of a person in a story from the vintage or the classical era who gave birth to a giant called Gargantua. Remember the movie Interstellar? What did they name the black hole which is a portal what did they name it they named it gargantua from that very story so we'll break all that down on tuesday let's go into the chat for a bit and see what you guys are up to 
Good morning. Yes, and the word Gargamel can scramble to the word Maga Grell. Which is why the Trump family calls their children Smurfs. You can't make this up. The Smurfs. Go on to their social media. Look at Donald Trump Jr. Calls his children Smurfs. Now you know why. All right. What else is going on in here? Okay. A lot of talking and no doing. I think we're doing it. I think everyone can agree we're doing it. This is a battle of the minds. What they want you to do is get physical and pick up things and do things to people. That's how they get you. That's how they play gotcha. That's how they walk in and arrest you. This is a battle of the minds. And as I just demonstrated, this channel... As you saw from information going back an entire decade, has obviously been suppressed. It's obviously been copied and taken by other much larger channels, which is fine. They can do that, no big deal. But the information has been suppressed because information is power. And the day that videos like this get seen by millions and millions of people will be the day that nobody buys Christmas presents anymore. The day that zero people show up to the voting booths because they know it's all fake. The day that everyone says, no, you don't run this country and global warming is not real. And we're going to continue using propane and gasoline because we, the people, have the power. That is the day. That is what information can do. And notice, I never mentioned picking up anything or trying to use violence for anything. So, we are taking action here. Information is power. Breaking the spell. Absolutely, Joe. That's what this is about. It'll be the day that people say, no way. How the heck did you come up with some venom that fast? How did the venom get made that fast? How? There's no possible way. Or it's 99.999% effective. No, wait, it's 90% effective. Oh, wait, it's not effective at all. Oh, wait, it's just going to minimize your symptoms. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Right? That's what knowledge and power it does. It empowers people. And that's how change happens. Not by protesting. Not by doing anything like that. It happens with knowledge. And when you show people this kind of profound information, they begin to wake up. They begin to stop worshiping the beast. And they begin believing in Jesus Christ. As their savior. So I will be back on here, I guess, Sunday. I mean, Monday, sorry. And that'll be a re upload. So I'll be in here in the chat with you guys. We'll be talking about prions. And then on Tuesday will be the Gargamel CERN experiment. Wow. I love each and every one of you guys. Have a great rest of your day. Take care and be safe.